Good morning and welcome to God's house. I pray you had a blessed week that God has given you increase in your finances and your spiritual life, your walk with the Lord that has given you the opportunity to speak his word to those that needed to hear a good word to lift them up. Today, we're going to be continuing on with the, uh, the hope of the cross, okay? Today, we're going to be talking about the identity with the cross. How do we identify with the cross? Amen? So, our, our main passage is coming out of Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Uh, I know it's not as big as what we usually have been having, but this verse says a lot, and I am going to have other verses along the way. So if you get your Bibles out and you, or you, you turn on your app on your tablet or your, your phone you know, to, to read along with us, and also a pen and a piece of paper, that way you can write things down if you're not going to be viewing this, uh, this video again. If not, you can always uh, go back on the video and pause it, you know, go fast forward, whichever one you want to do. Um, but I ask just please share it. Share it with those that, that you know need to hear a good word. And those that uh, if you want to have it a Bible study, you know, to sort of meditate on it a little bit more, a little bit closer to get into God's word. Uh, compare it, you know, with, with other, uh, other versions of scripture that, that are out there. And know that I do read out of the New King James Version because that, to me, is the closest thing to the King, King James Version. Um, anything else, uh, you start deleting words, and, and God said not to even change one word you know, of, of his word. So, um, like I said, we're going to be reading out of Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Let's go ahead and open up today in a word of prayer to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity you've given us to come back into your temple, your house, your house of prayer. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you come into our heart, into our life, that you, that you take away our sins from us, that you create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us so that we can do your work and your will, that, Father God, we can work to build your kingdom and edify the body of Christ. We ask your Lord Jesus that it be your word today and not mine that comes out of my mouth, that we meditate on your word day and night. We ask this in your mighty name. Amen. And amen. Our goal for, for this today is to, uh, to help Christians, to help you find your identity in the cross. Uh, whether to die or we are to die to ourselves. Okay, and to experience the power of Christ in our daily lives. That's the power of the cross. Um, on one occasion, a man went to a psychiatrist because he was having problems. They were serious problems, so he thought that he needed to seek out a serious solution. And I know we go through that as well. Uh, there are times where we do know that in our minds, in our minds, we have serious problems, okay? Now, entering the psychiatrist's cozy and neatly decorated office, the man took a seat. Then he headed straight into his problem. Doc, he said, and the doctor kept his eyes straight on him and nodded his head, urging him to gently continue. Doc, something's wrong, the man blurted out. What's the problem, sir? The doctor asked, trying to get more information. Well, every time I go to the supermarket, I'm drawn to the, the dog food. I just want to be around the dog food. In fact, I love to eat the dog food. The doctor shifted his weight in his chair and decided to search for you know, some background on this man's issue. How long have you been struggling with this problem? The doctor asked patiently. Ever since I was a puppy, the man replied. You see, how you perceive yourself, how you perceive yourself, how you look at yourself, how you identify with yourself will determine what you seek after. If you perceive yourself as a puppy, then you will naturally want to find some dog food. In other words, your identity is critical to your behavior, habits and ways of operating. That is who you are. And that's how you're going to be represented throughout your life. Many Christians today 
are confused about who they are. Okay, which is it's tough to, uh, to to even fathom that you know when you're a Christian you know who you are okay but there are others today that are confused about who they are which in turn brings about confusion in how they are to function we function the way we function because of how we perceive ourselves who we are to be this means that if your self perception or your self perception in is incorrect your function will be errant as well as we think of ourselves as we have a, a problem okay, we have a big problem in our minds then that's what we're going to put across to people is that problem it is who we are okay I've got like five or six sermon points on this and I'm going to cover the first one is the cross is central to a Christian's identity this is who we are. We've talked about it over the past couple of weeks. Is that it's not just a decoration. The Christ cross where he was crucified. It represents a lot more to us as Christians in our lives. And, you know, it, it goes all the way to communication with God. You know, right now is how we communicate with God. It's all because of the cross. It's Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for us. And he is the only way. He is that bridge that we have to go through to get to God the Father. So we need to examine the role the cross plays in our personal identity. Though Peter was a Christian, he put his, his cultural identity above his Christian identity. How many times do we often do that? Um, we put our own personal self above or in front of Christ, okay, which is Christ in us as the new man again. The old man is gone. You know, when we accept Christ inside of us, the old man's gone. Everything is made new. We are now made in the image, okay? So we start becoming more like Christ day by day as we work on our, our spiritual lives. Now, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 11, uh, you know, it talks about Paul when he had come to Peter, okay? It says, now when Peter had come to Antioch, I, with, I withstood him to his face. He came up into his face, okay? Because he was to blame, okay? Apparently, he wasn't preaching God. He wasn't, you know, preaching Jesus Christ. That wasn't the total, you know, focus. It wasn't his focus. It was, okay, I can relate as a Gentile, okay? I am trying to, I'm trying to teach you the Jewish way, but I'm living more like a Gentile. And that's the way I'm talking to you is more like a Gentile. Instead of talking to you as a Christian, okay, as what he represents. And so he's falling back on that a little bit and he's getting the message sort of a little bit out of whack there. And so Paul had to put him back in his place. So, you know, that, that's where he came from that. Paul confronted Peter and reminded him that he wasn't functioning in light of identification with the cross, more a, of an identification with a personal self, okay? In Galatians 2.14, this is where Paul confronts Peter publicly. It says, but when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, okay, he said before everybody, Okay, and this is where Paul exposes Peter's hypocrisy in appearing to live under the law. Okay, it says, if you, being a Jew, live in the manner of Gentiles and not as the Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? You know, it's, a, it, it's sort of like that, that uh, little saying that, that we got, you know, you're, you're going to do as I say, not as I do. Okay, he's trying to preach. Uh, Christianity and preach them the cross of Jesus and he's doing it to the people but he's not living it okay how can you do that how can you say one thing and do another okay so Paul had set Peter straight on that now we need to make the cross the centerpiece of our identity okay make it the centerpiece make it the central focus if we focus ourselves on that, that's what people are going to see through us. 
If you have received Jesus Christ as your Savior, a crucifixion has taken place. Okay, so when we accept him, we are crucified with Christ. We are now with him. Okay, in Galatians 2.20, says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay, you have crucified yourself with Christ on the cross. So we are with him when we accept him into our lives, okay? When you became a Christian, a legal transition took place that justified you and made you one with Christ. The forgiveness of our sins. We were brought together in knowing that Jesus paid the price. That he is the one and only Son of God that came down in our place. He stood in our place. He took the cross in our place. He did it all for us so that we could be free, that we can do God's business and not have to be a slave to hell and damnation. We are not a slave to the devil. We are slaves to Christ, and that's where we want to be. We want to be crucified with him, to live with him eternally. When we find our identity on the cross, we will have the power to live a victorious life that pleases God. That is one thing that we all strive for is the pleasing of God in doing his work. And with this, we have the power to be victorious over anything that this earth has to throw at us. To complete God's work, his purpose and plan, our destiny that he has given us, we're able to complete that. Amen. Number two, excuse me, the cross established a new reference point, okay, a new place at the beginning okay this is our new beginning we were old we came to Christ boom we're made new so it's a new life all right allow your oneness with Christ to influence your thoughts though actions and decisions your oneness with Christ so yeah you, you remember the slogans they, they used to have out with uh, um, what was that walk with Jesus daily what would Jesus do uh, you know, the WWJDs. With oneness with Christ, we have to put ourselves into that, make him our central focus in the, the situations that come to, come at us every day. In every thought, action, and decisions we make, we need to put Jesus first to make sure he's there. So, Paul died to himself daily in order to maximize his union with the cross. He died daily. Uh, you know, his was a, a memory. It's like, uh, as per today, we take communion in remembrance of me. Okay, we come in and we, we remember what Christ did for us. We remember the, the, the price that was paid. We remember what he did before. He is the good news. We remember him. We remember Christ. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 15, 31, uh, this is Paul. He says, I affirm by the boasting in you, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord, I die daily. He is dying daily with Jesus. Now, to die means to put your desires, thoughts, and, and uh, motives on the altar of Jesus Christ and pick up his instead. You got to pick up his cross. Take all our burdens, whatever we have in this world, take it, lay it down at the altar, lay it down at the cross. And then pick up Jesus, okay? Pick up his cross. Let's follow Jesus. Let's do what he wants us to do. That's what Paul was getting at. Choose to die to yourself and live for God. We need to choose to die to this world, to this world, whatever is binding you down, whatever uh, sinful thing has a stronghold on you that has got you chained down. We need to get rid of that. Remember last week we talked about the shaking. Okay, God is going to shake up, you know, your life and, and the world. And we see all this shaking up going on and all the, the garbage is falling off. And what's underneath is what he wants. He wants that stable. He wants that thing that is not going to move, which is his. All right. So choose to die to yourself and live for God. There can be no resurrection without a crucifixion. We have to be crucified with Christ 
in order to die and be resurrected, okay? There has to be that crucifixion in our spiritual life, ourselves, right? You don't belong to yourself. You are bought by Jesus Christ, blood. He is the one that paid that price for you. He is the one that uh, that when judgment day comes or, you know, when, when the father asks, what have you done with my son? Okay. That's when Jesus is going to stand up as our mediator and he's going to say, ah, it is all paid for. Everything. All the sins are all paid for. I paid that price. Okay. That is what he does. You don't belong to yourself. You were bought by Jesus Christ's blood. Number three, let's move into this. How to identify with the cross. How do we do this? Live by the faith of the Son of God. Live by the faith of the Son of God. In knowing that He is there. He is with us all the time. That, that we have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us. That we have Father God speaking through the Holy Spirit. Knowing that we are one. We are a part of that family. A part of that vine. Okay. That, that we talked about, you know, months ago. We talked about the vine and the vine dresser, okay? God is the vine dresser. We are the vine. He, you know, or he is the vine. We're the branches. And we have the fruit coming off of us, and yet God is the one that prunes us. So if you're not making good fruit, you'll be cut off and cast to the ground, okay? But can you be put back on? Yes, you can. You can be put back on. If the vine dresser wants you back on the vine, he can graft you back into the vine and, and prune you and make good fruit. So just because you backslide that, that you sin or something that, you know, something happens, it doesn't mean that you have failed God and that God is not going to allow you back. That just means that you failed and, you know, something happened and God is dealing with you. And he's saying basically, okay, just don't do it again. You know, learn from your mistakes. Learn by what you do that's wrong not to do them again. So he can still use you. Um, okay. There can be no resurrection without the crucifixion. Paul trusted in Jesus' own faith in himself in Galatians 2.20, which we had read. Okay, so you can look back on it, Galatians 2.20. But trust in Jesus' ability to come through for you. Whatever Jesus did, he's still doing in our lives. Jesus didn't just die on the cross and fade away into nothingness. Jesus uh, rose to go sit at the right hand of God. He is still with us. And so whatever powers he had left for us is still in us. It's still with us. Therefore, he is still with us. All right? So we got to trust in Jesus' ability to come through for us. Now put your faith in the only worthy object. Uh, you know, we, we have faith in a lot of things that, that we shouldn't have. And there's only one thing that we really need to put our faith in. That is a worthy object, okay? Faith in the cross of Jesus Christ. That's what we need to put our faith in, is what he has done for us. The object of our faith, not the size of our faith, mind you. It's, it's not the size. It's the object. That's what matters. Jesus Christ is the only one worthy of your faith. He's the only one. Uh, you can have faith in man. You can have faith in money. You can have faith in uh, the, the building that you live in or work in. You can have the faith in a lot of things. But guess what? The earth has to shake. It's going to shake. And when it does, things are going to crumble down. Nothing is firm. We see that in our financial institutions. Nothing is firm. You know, when a bank goes bankrupt, there's something wrong, right? So uh, you can't have that faith in things here on earth. You can't have that. The only faith, the true faith that you need is one in Jesus Christ. Um, we have number four here. The cross gives us power. It is the power of the cross. Identify, identify, excuse me, with the cross of Jesus and find strength. Identify that part of it. When we have that picture of the cross that, that's up there, identify with what it represents. What is the central focus of the cross? Jesus Christ. 
If you had him up there on your cross, you would see that the center, very center of that is the center of Jesus. He is the reason. Okay? He is the strength. Now, Paul found strength in Christ to face daily challenges. Okay? As in Philippians 4, uh, verse 13. He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And he didn't just say, I can do some things through Christ who strengthens me. He says, no, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, which means Christ is our strength. So if we add Christ into it, nothing is impossible. I can do all things. Now, Christians today have access to the same power as Paul. Whether you believe it or not, uh, whether you've tested it out or not, you know, I don't like to use the word testing because we don't want to test God. Um, we see it in when we pray. We pray for uh, healing, you know, the healing power, you know, to come upon people. Uh, we've seen that happen. We've seen cancer healed. We've seen bones healed. We've seen stomach problems healed. Um, you know, we've, we've seen tons of stuff, you know, even COVID, you know, being sick, people being sick, you know, you're not going to feel anything. You know, God is healing you. And I said, you just got to claim it. That's one of the most important things to have faith enough in that prayer to claim it, totally claim it as being done right now. It is finished. God is taking care of it. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, you don't go back and you, you pray because, you know, even a constant prayer in it. David did the same thing. David had to pray constantly for his prayers at times, you know, and it took him uh, quite a while, but he would keep constant in that prayer so that the prayer would be answered, okay? Sometimes it takes a little bit longer for the messengers to get through with the message. It all depends on uh, what the state of the world is, I guess, you know, what, uh, you know, what power the devil has over people at that time or, you know, whatever it is. But we have to keep praying. We have to, you know, be crucified with Christ daily. Um, allow Christ to empower your mortal body for his service. Okay? Christians today have access to the same power as Paul did. Paul encourages believers to let Jesus Christ live through them. Okay? encouraging everybody all christians who are watching this everybody who's watching this non-believers believe in jesus christ accept him into your heart into your life today bring him in okay let him have access meditate on his good news okay i've always said don't start at the bible at the beginning start at the bible at the new testament in the beginning of the new testament at matthew Start there, work your way up through the good news because that's Jesus. Jesus is the good news. And then later on, you can go into the historical facts and everything of what God had done, you know, through people or to people or, you know, whatever it was, uh, you know, any situation that arises in our life has already been done somewhere in the Bible. It's already been done. History is repeating itself. It does. And all we have to do is look back on history to figure out what it was, what the outcome is, okay? And then put it in our daily lives. So there are answers to the problems. Um, but he encourages believers to let Jesus Christ live through them. In Colossians uh, chapter 1, verse 27. Now this is part of the mystery that Jesus would actually indwell believers, Okay. To them, God willed to make known that they are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay, so that's Christ in you. That's the mystery. That's the hope, okay? That is what he wanted us to know. When we yield to Christ, he will enable us to function supernaturally, not just naturally. We see things happen, and that's where we testify about what God is doing in our lives. How God has moved in the lives of other people, our family, our friends, you know, and in businesses even. Okay, total businesses have prospered when they allow God in there. You know, Jesus Christ is in their business. All right, so that is also 
brought them into prosperity as long as they are working with Jesus. Okay, you got to have that love. When we yield to Christ, he will enable us to function supernaturally, not just naturally. A supernatural life will be glorious and victorious because we have Jesus with us. Jesus, you know, where God is before us, who or what can be against us? We're talking about in the spiritual world. We're talking about uh, the blessings poured out from God. So a supernatural life will be glorious and victorious. Uh, number five, the identity with the cross through relationship, not rules. It is the relationships. Don't add anything to the cross. The cross has already given us everything that we need. And we have to be able to relate to that. Amen. So it's not rules. It is a relationship. Paul warned Christians not to add anything to the cross, thus remembering it null and void or rendering it null and void. If you want to change something, it better not be of God. It better not be of something that Jesus had taught that, that he had written down. Anything in God's word. Don't add anything to it. Take it for what it is and for what it means. That is all that we need. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 21, this is where Paul shows why the, the issue of law righteousness is so important. Okay? It says, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Okay? So we don't abide by the old law. It's all new law through Jesus Christ. If we just go ahead and, and uh, take what Jesus has done, and just pay no attention to it and we go by the old laws then what he did was for nothing and we don't want that we know it isn't true okay what is true is that he gave us laws he laid them down but when we add rules and rituals to the saving power of the cross it no longer has an effect in our lives when you put them rituals into your life when you put them old laws back in there then nothing is made new. You're still the old man. Nothing was made new. You're not new in Christ because you've denounced Christ's work. So open the door to God's blessings by identifying with the cross and who Jesus is. God will only flow his power through you if you are connected to the cross. Now God wants a relationship with you through Christ's sacrifice on the cross. Give him that relationship. Let us all remember Jesus Christ as, as God's son, as his purpose here on earth, of what he did for us, as what God has sacrificed for us because he loved us so much. He gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. I'm going to end this on, a, on an illustration and a little bit of a background. How to identify with the cross. Have you ever taken a child on a piggyback ride? Okay, I know a lot of you parents have done that. Do you know what that child believes in? Okay, you got him on your shoulders. He's high. So what is he believing in? That child is not just believing in you. He or she is believing that you believe in you. That the adult, the parent, believes in in him okay so they believe that you have confidence in you i have confidence knowing i'm not going to drop you you're not going to fall i've got you you're sturdy that is why we will ask do you have me or they they will ask do, do you have me you know, do you have me daddy do you have me mommy okay in other words they are asking do you believe that you have me this is because even though they may have doubts, if you believe then, they will believe in your belief. So it's all a trust thing. It's all believing in you because you believe in you. Amen. I know it's a little bit tough and you got to chew on that a little bit. So you need to go back and rewind this and, and, and listen to it again. But it's, it's a lot of, you know, we as adults need to also have faith. We have to believe in ourselves that we are not going to drop the ball. We're not going to drop anybody, all right? That we have it. We, we've got you, right? Now, 
a little background biblical history and culture. And now crucified in Galatians 2.20. To crucify with a transcendent sense or crucify with and of identification with Christ's crucifixion. So that's when you know we say crucified with Christ. That's what we're talking about. Now loved, okay, in Galatians 2.20. It says to have a warm regard for and interest in another or cherish or have affection for or love okay, of the affection of transcendent beings or ordinary human beings. Okay, We have a love for Jesus. And I'm going to cut off with this quote here. It's not the size of your faith that matters. It's the object of your faith that matters. What do you have faith in. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this word that you've given us today. And I pray that it enters the hearts and the minds of all those that are watching this video, that are hearing this message. That it, they don't hide it like a, like a bushel, you know, hiding the light. We want to be able to share it with all those that we meet. Father God, hide it in our hearts so that when we need it, when someone is sent our way by you that needs to hear your word, that we have it there and we can share it with them. Let the Holy Spirit work through us and speak your words to bring them closer, to plant that seed in them, to watch them grow, Father God, in you, to learn your word and to meditate on it day and night. We ask, Father God, that that people take heed, that all of us come closer to the cross, that all of us come closer to you, Jesus Christ, for all that you have done and all you are still doing in our lives. We thank you and we love you. We ask that you watch over us today as we head back out into the missions field, as we leave our properties or wherever we're at, that Lord Jesus, that you watch over us, that you build a hedge of protection around us, Father God, where no darts, no fiery darts of the devil can, can be shot at us. You're our shield. And wherever you are before us, nothing or nothing, nobody can be against us. We ask that you bless us, that you bless our properties, our houses, our businesses, all the churches, and protect every living Christian soul around this world. We ask this in your mighty name, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. And I hope you got a lot out of this, uh, this little series on the cross. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you have any praise reports or prayer requests, please write them also. You can visit us at, at www.thevineyardcog.com. Go to the contact us section. And you could write it in there and it'll go to my email. And with that, I will pray for it automatically. And on Wednesday night, our prayer group comes together and we pray, pray over them also. And all you have to do is when you give it to us, when you pray to the Lord, claim it. That's all I ask is that you claim it. You have faith in knowing that Jesus is there, that he has heard your prayer. Amen. And we shall see you next Sunday.